Namaste. How have you been? The spherical shape, the lingam, circular, something which doesn't have any corners, is our spiritual blueprint. This is not a physical state, but something which is felt. It's a state of higher consciousness. And then you can relate with me so clearly when I say that when you are doing your technique, you can feel your energy actually goes in a circular motion. And inside the body, as I mentioned in that last talk, there are like 12 points. Three of them are vital. Kanda, the lingam of the hips, it's positioned upright. And by visualization, internalization of the image of the upward lingam, we assist our body in channeling the energy. And the Kanda Nadi is important because this is where the three fundamental channels start from. Ida, Pingala, Shushumna. And it's encompassing. It occupies the whole of our pelvic cavity and it touches the bottom of the Manipura Chakra. That alone is so important because the element of earth yeah, the fire of the haps and the flowing element of water in the Swadishtana chakra, the sacrum, yeah, and the Manipura chakra being the center of our cosmic anatomy. They need to become free of stagnation so we can flow the energy yeah. gently and fluidly, not irritate the energy. So, so flowing the energy and awaking the energy are different concepts altogether. Yeah. Awakening the energy is easy, and there are techniques, but regulating and flowing the energy to something which will serve our spiritual journey is another thing. It's actually challenging, and it can effectively happen in yeah, the safe uh, awakening, the safe uh, activation of the energy will only happen once these three bottom chakras are sorted out. Muladhara, the pelvis, the pelvic floor, Swadishtana, sacrum, Manipura, the navel. Uh, and the Kandanadi being the foundation is vital. And what are the techniques? Of course, asana is number one. But before asana, you need to do your preparatory cleansing practices, shakarma. Pranayama. Because only the breath really can irrigate those deeply hidden channels. Some mudras too. Yeah? Yeah. For example, the uh, Mahavira Mudra, yeah, something which promotes the mobility and releases stagnation of the head. So, all right. Second of those three important ones. And then, by the way, the center or the eye of the Kandanadi is the Shodhisthana Chakra. All right. Now, the second is right here. The frontal part of the brain mostly. So it's actually from the back of the nasal cavity behind the uvula and it goes to the side, yeah, crawls up to the temples and then rise up here and it ends at the fontanel. Yeah, the space just below the crown of the head, right at the top of the forehead. All right. And this is the seat of what? Our external Awareness. That's why it's called the third eye. The center of this lingam, yeah, its position laterally, is the Ajna Chakra. All right, so our external realm, beyond the physical body. And that's why it's positioned lateral. So it's expansive. So when we meditate upon that, yeah, from the center of the eyebrows, as you breathe and expand your awareness wide, you go outside. Right. And then last, right here, the top of the brain. Yeah. It starts yeah, at the back of uh, the brain where the spine and the base of the brain meets. That intersection is the uh, pineal gland there inside. And it goes to the side. Yeah. And it ends where the Ajna 
Lingam finishes. All right. So that's the intersection. And the center is the Shahashra Red Chakra. And this is positioned flat. Why is it flat? Because that's really our nature. That's our spiritual identity. We're seedless. We're just sitting in the middle. The state of sattva. We're not capable of producing anymore. So we just acknowledge that the situation is there. We don't react. We just look passive. Yeah. So this is coming back to ourself, our spiritual identity. So just by meditating upon this flat surface, we become non-reacting. And where is this flat surface? Behind your eyelids, if you close your eyelids and then just gaze in front of it, there's this horizon hovering in front. Right. So what are the techniques? Yeah, let's go back here. What are the techniques we do to promote this? The lingam of the ashram. Chanting. Yeah. Mudras. Especially the mudras of the eyes and the tongue and the mouth. Praying. Singing. Listening. Nada. Yeah. Occupies the spot. Yeah, subtle sound. Yeah. And of course, yeah, pranayama. Yeah, pranayama is universal. Right? When it comes to pranayama, um, Nadi Shodana, and then Kumbhaka. And some, of course, uh, activation of your tongue inside. All right. Here, the pranayama, predominantly, the, 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 the most powerful, the Bastrika. Here, Nadi Shodana with Kumbhaka. And then some eye exercises too. All right. In here, silence and stillness. Reading scriptures. All right. So those are the techniques to promote yeah, our state of sattva. Yeah, something which um, in the eye of an external observer, not important, but we know <laughs> because we feel them. Yeah, so this is really very vital. Silence, stillness, reading scriptures, gaining, gaining inspiration, listening to recitations. Yes, um, those are the ways we can promote the Sahasrara Lingam. All right, and there is another one, yeah, which is actually um, my favorite. Yeah, here, the heart space. So this is the seat of goodness. Yeah. So anything which comes from the heart, if the intention is good, is serving us. Yeah. It's noble. Yeah. It's sacred. Yeah. So what are these techniques? Yeah. Teachings, yeah. service, charity, yeah. karma yoga. Yeah. So those are the ways to promote yeah. the nobility and the beauty of the heart. There's also one here around the core, yeah, like a circular motion there. This the seed, yeah, the activation of the core, yeah. Activation in a way that is not too physical. It's mostly energetic practices, pranayama here. And there's also one here, I could feel it. Yeah. So from because the heart, the heart shape or the heart lingam actually starts from the two big ribs and it goes to the side, the lungs, the collarbones, and will end here. And the center is the heart. So in Samadhi, this is uh, so true. Like in the Samadhi, like the heart burst, it implodes, and then the energy will just go up to the brain. Yeah, so this is very powerful, the heart. And then this also here, yeah, from the center of the hollow of the throat, the hole, and it goes to the side, and it ends where <laughs> the lingam of the ashna finishes. Yeah, this, so there's, there, these are like intersections. Yeah, intersections of yeah, the energy as it goes to the next higher stage. Yeah, so just to give you an idea, this one, yeah, so what are the techniques? Of course, chanting, yeah, Brahmari Pranayama, where we hum the vocal cords, so those are the techniques to promote, and Viparita Karani, Mudra, yeah, those are the techniques too. All right, so um, hopefully I'll be able to explore more of this in the future, yeah, but this is good information already. 
Yeah. So when you have the information and then you're faced with, for example, you practice and you're faced with like experiences and yeah, things that um, at first you cannot make sense of, yeah, <laughs> and by yeah having yeah, some information like this, um, yeah, your your practice becomes meaningful, yeah, because even we tackle the journey differently, yeah, but really, yeah, so um, yeah, we experience the same yeah, realizations as we go along the way. Good. Thank you for listening, and I'll catch you in the next one. Namaste. Right.